Okay. All right, we are recording. All right, hello everybody. Uh, hey, guy. Hi, welcome to our first Zoom meeting for the library board. <laughs> like that technology. Uh, I'll call to order. Okay, so it's six oh one. Um, Guy Mason. Present. Scott Gilbert. Present. Sarah Harkness. Here. Marie Hoda. Here. Austin Stryker. Present. Amy Wilson. Here. Um, Councilmember Cuesta, we do not have him present. Um, Jen Hubbard. Here. And staff, we have Christina Underhill. Present. Um, and Councilmember Cuesta is just connecting in right now. Um, Mark Mollis. Here. Kimberly Powers. Here. And myself, Debbie Severa, and Dave Cuesta. Good evening, present. Good evening, thanks. Okay, we're all set. Did I get everyone? I think so. Okay. Great. All right, thank you. All right, it looks like we're gonna meet our new library manager. Hello. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> yes, in, a, in unusual circumstances. <laughs> and Mark, do you wanna just tell a little bit about your background and history with our Inglewood Library and just uh, all about yeah, you? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so I've been in libraries for a while now, but uh, about two years ago, let's see, about three years ago, I started as the public services supervisor for Inglewood Library. Um, during that time, I actually uh, met at least a couple of you, or I recognize a face or two here, um, uh, in, in that capacity, and, uh, and I believe at a board meeting. Um, uh, uh, so I, I was in that job for about a year, um, took some time off to raise my small children. They were one and three at the time, they're now three and five. Uh, so it felt like time to start thinking about going back to work. And Right around the time I was starting to think about that, uh, the library manager job for Englewood opened up and I was lucky enough to, uh, to receive an offer. Um, I know the staff there very well. I know the community very well. I'm very excited to be back. Um, working for the city of Englewood has been a wonderful experience previously and has been again so far. Um, so we are obviously in a very interesting situation <laughs> coming, you know, as, as an unusual time uh, to be starting a job like this, um, the road ahead is uh, unclear right now, as Kimberly certainly knows. We we were uh, it, the last couple of weeks have been a lot of improvisation, um, but I'm very excited to be part of Englewood Library again. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you know Englewood. It's an unusual place. <laughs> it, <laughs> but it's a, a charming one. <laughs> no, I, I love Englewood. I've lived here for ages, but but I am glad you know it. I mean, it's a, it's 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 not run of the mill, you know. Yeah, yeah. Its character is more unique than just uh, you know. I think the easy way to think about it is the intersection between the uh, Denver, the urban area, and the suburban area of the the other suburbs. Um, but it's it's a more unique place than just that. Um. Okay, well, I think we're gonna um, approve the minutes. Actually, I'm looking for the minutes because I don't have them pulled up. Um, are there any questions for the minutes? Does everyone else have them except for me? Uh, I'm still trying to find them. I tried to print out, here we go, and I couldn't because I have an Epson printer. So as soon as you run out of one kind of ink, you're done until you go to the store. <laughs> okay, I called me to order. Yep. They look good to me. I'll move to approve. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm still chairperson. Great. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, all, right um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Minutes are approved. Are there any public people here? I don't see anybody. Okay. Uh, so no public comment. So we can move into the uh, reports, library statistical report, which I'm guessing it's a big zero, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, 
Not completely zero. Yeah, I was going to say, it's ever so <laughs> slightly more nuanced than that. Okay, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> Do you guys have any specific questions uh, regarding the report that you want staff to review or explain possibly? So it looks like virtual visitors are down as well as they're not up for, that's kind of weird. Um, I, I would say if, if you don't mind my speculating on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suspect that that has to do with um, virtual visitors are counting uh, visitors to the catalog system. Um, and obviously with, uh, for, so as soon as the closure went into effect, the, uh, we, we worked with Marmot to make sure that the hold system was turned off as well. We didn't want to um, incorrectly signal to people that they were able to continue placing library holds. Um, so once the catalog basically became without any meaningful functionality for most users, I suspect they stopped visiting it. Okay, so yeah, digital circulation is up a little bit. Digital circulation is up a little bit, um, um, not as much as you would have hoped for given the circumstances. Yeah, uh, I think that um, we would, uh, a couple things on that. One is that um, one of our services called Canopy, uh, which is a streaming movies um, and document, a lot of documentary film, independent film, um, and some educational videos. Uh, that service, we actually, during the course of the uh, 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 closure, um, hit a limit, a global limit on spending that we were unaware of. Um, it was established, it was set in 2018 when we first started using that service. Um, and when we, uh, during the closure, our, our numbers did increase um, and they didn't, it wasn't like an exponential growth, but it was enough that we ended up running into that global limit um, and that unfortunately meant that use for the public was blocked at that point. Uh, we had that resolved within a week or two. Um, that would have, you know, constrained the numbers to some degree. Um, and then otherwise, you know, I think there was, there's a real desire, I, I'll be frank, I, I have a real desire to do more promotion of the digital collection, especially as, you know, we're in this period where we're not able to fully reopen to the public just yet. Um, mm -hmm. there's a real opportunity there. Uh, we'd like to see greater growth with the digital materials. Yeah, actually has there, I know we talked about before about having more promotion of the digital materials. Has there been any campaign, um, and uh, there's not been a social media campaign yet. Actually, we're having a meeting about that tomorrow morning, um, <laughs> with, uh, several of the staff members, uh, to discuss social media generally, the digital material, digital materials are my biggest priority in that. Mm -hmm. Um, we, uh, have, well, as of just a day or two ago, so I came on board about a little less than two weeks ago at this point. So I have a lot of catching up to do. Um, but we, okay. uh, did put an update, uh, to, on, on the city website and on the Facebook page, um, about the closure, the services we're offering as of now, um, including curbside service and, and, and reminding people of the, uh, digital collection that they have access to, but um, a, a more strategic uh, campaign to promote the digital materials is very much on the agenda. Right. I think um, one thing we did do, we did do a little bit of pushing of it through Facebook, but an email went out at one point um, that, that prompted it and also said that we would be in the library at that time three days a week. That did prompt a lot of calls um, part of the challenge is, especially with our um, older patrons, um, they're intimidated by it. And um, one Friday, I did a lot of hand-holding for probably about 10 older ladies that it took three phone calls. And so I think that now that we are in the library more and can take more of those calls um, and let the the community know that we're there to help them get on those, I think that will help because I think there's a lot of them that are just intimidated by it. And yeah. since they can't come into the library and get that help, we just need to get them focused on, give us a call um, and we'll get you through it, so. That's a, yeah, that's a really good point, Kimberly. And there was um, another library, I believe it's uh, Clearview. 
uh, we were looking at their website and they, they're offering um, online, uh, like during the closure period, uh, tech support. Basically, they're, they're sort of an ask, ask a geek sort of thing they are, they're marketing it as. And I think that something like that would make a lot of sense. So we're looking at what are the tools, you know, Kimberly doing it over the phone, that's, that's challenging um, to help people where you can't see their technology. Um, it's definitely, I don't know, under the best circumstances, it's, it's a challenge to help people with their personal devices um, act, you know, to use some of these applications if, if they're not, if they don't have a natural sort of technical literacy. Um, <laughs> or grandchildren, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and so um, trying to strategize around what are the best ways to help put people in touch with those materials. Um, to some degree, it's going to be um, telephone assistance. To some degree, there might be some video conferencing sort of software that will help us do that. The, the, the inherent, uh, you know, uh, challenge there is if they're competent enough to use the video conferencing software, they probably don't need help with the applications. Um, and so we're, we're definitely looking at the strategies that will help. And then the other thing uh, I'd add to that is um, written and uh, uh, video um tutorials uh anything that we can do to just help make it easier for our patrons specifically there is stuff that's generic uh tutorials um but if it's not referencing your specific library sometimes that creates a barrier to people okay. sounds fair How, so where do these kids come from for the in-house kid for program so they're actual actually oh, virtual. it's the virtual story virtual. times and we also did some um, a read aloud for a little bit older kids. That one didn't um, get as many people following. But the virtual story times, I I probably have a solid twenty families who do one or the other, and sometimes both. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I've seen those. Yeah. I've seen those. That makes sense. Yes. They're awesome. We love them. <laughs> I can't get my daughter interested in any of the virtual anything her school has virtual classes and she won't look at it so oh really <laughs> yeah well i have a great picture of murray's kids watching yeah. it so <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> the re-entry to library sitting will be difficult <laughs> <laughs> they're one and a half and three and a half for reference uh -oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay as uh, it action plan so I can, um, I'm actually the one who updated this, so I can take us through a couple of the, the points. Um, as I'd mentioned, an email did go out that informed all patrons of resources available during the closure. Um, that kind of goes back to the awareness of the library throughout the community. Um, like I said, that did give us a little bit of an uptake in the use of the resources. Um, as far as the teen population, um, we have continued to have um, regular hangouts with them. And um, we started a quarantine. I don't know if you've seen that, but we're posting their artwork on a blog. Um, that's been really fun. And then we did finalize with the um, Englewood schools as far as um, summer reading. They are our biggest supporter and actually provided the money um, to for our book prizes as well as our other prizes. And um, uh, let's see, increase in the use of library facilities and collections. Um, I know we have an update um, on the agenda for Prospector, but I'll just tell you right now, it is postponed until we have a date when we are open and running um, and probably running for a period of time before we start it. Um, they are doing all the work in the, the background to be prepared so that when we say we're ready to go, they'll be ready to go. Um, we did some staff training on it but obviously we're gonna to have to go through a lot of that again when we're ready to go with it. Um, as I had mentioned, email and Facebook promotion did prompt a few calls about accessing e-resources. Um, and then we really didn't do too much with the local history stuff. 
in the last month. Most of it has been um, pretty focused on <laughs> the craziness we're in. So, but any questions? We're making local history. Yes, yes, we are. Uh, there. Do we have like any kind of uh, um, even rough timetable yet of when library operations might start to reopen or is that just still too vague to even guess? I'm, I'm happy to address that. Um, uh, right now, as of this week, as of yesterday, we started doing a curbside service pickup for library materials. Um, we've actually seen uh, quite enough, you know, we've had, uh, the, where were we at as of the time you left, Kimberly, 30 something appointments scheduled for pickup. We did, I know we did at least a dozen or so today. Yeah, I, I didn't check the numbers. I know that when I left at four, there were six scheduled pickups. So, okay. yeah. um, you know, the middle of the day was definitely a little slower because mm -hmm. um, the two to four time frame was slower, but the four to six um, had a pretty good run. So, yeah. So as of yesterday, we're getting access to materials again for people. That, that, that was and our first phase. how is that working? Uh, it's it's a challenge. I mean, uh, yeah, it, we, we, there's a lot of logistics to solve. I mean, it's it's a totally new service for us, and so it's something um, where every step has to be solved for. Um, we had to change the way we deliver hold not notifications. We have to figure out how, what that look. I don't want to don't want to bog it down in details. Our priority has been to simplify the process for patrons. So people who had existing holds, they're getting a new notification that says you can come pick this up by appointment, essentially. And then there's a link in the email um, that we're sending right. to people where they can follow that, they can schedule the appointment. Then when they show up, um, there's a sign outside the building uh, on the parking garage side that says, you know, call or text this number. They call or text, okay. let us know that they're there and we go take the items out to them. Um, Got it. We're really trying to prioritize simplicity for the mm -hmm. patron experience, um, which, you know, almost by necessity means it can be a little complicated on the back end for staff. Um, so uh, everyone has been very willing to, to go with this. I know I stressed Kimberly out a little bit this morning, so, um, but, we're, but it's going okay. Uh, uh, patron feedback has been uh, so, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kimberly, but my experience is overwhelmingly positive. People are really appreciative that we're able to provide that. Um, and timeline wise to return to Scott's question, um, Douglas County started, uh, curbside, uh, Monday as well. Um, the, the other libraries in the area, Denver, Arapahoe, Jeffco, their timelines farther out. Um, so we're kind of on the leading edge of the curve on that one. Um, as far as reopening goes, um, our plan is to initially, uh, phase that in with limited computer access, um, because we know that there's a real need in the community for people to be able to access the public computers. Um, that's a real priority. Um, that will probably also be appointment based. Um, and that way we can pretty strongly control, uh, who's coming in and out of the library, um, rather than just throwing the doors open to the public. Um, that's, that's, that's for staff and patron safety. Um, that's informed by uh, we're, we, we're, we're proceeding under guidance from the um, governor's office, the executive orders that have been issued, as well as guidance from uh, CDPHE and um, the Tri County Health Department. Uh, as the, as of the safer at home order, um, the, under under the order, the, the executive order, libraries were not specifically mentioned. But there was an FAQ posted to the COVID-19 page on the Colorado.gov site that says under the safer at home order, libraries are one of the categories of businesses that are to remain closed during the safer at home period. Um, that was the first mention of libraries that we saw in any communication from the state during this crisis. So that was revealing. Um, not, not that we do in a, in a bad way, but just like in, interesting that we were specifically called out as something to remain closed, even as other retail is, or as retail is being allowed to start to reopen. Um, then there was a press release I, that I believe came out yesterday uh, from the governor's office that laid out a, a, a more detailed timeline of reopening under the safer at home order. And that specifically said that as of June 1st, um, summer camps and public spaces such as public libraries will be reevaluated to determine what reopening looks like. 
Um, so uh, given where other libraries are at in the metro area and given what we've heard from the governor's office and the advice we're getting from the various uh, health departments, uh, well, Tri-County Health and CDPHE, um, it, we're kind of figuring around that, around that June 1st date is where we start to see reopening happening. Or people, uh, people have not had to return materials yet, right? People that had materials checked out in March or whenever the heck. Hey, yeah, uh, due dates were extended to June 1st and the okay. book drops have been open continuously. Okay. So is there like an email or something that'll go out to people? Because my, my memory isn't that long. I hope I don't have anything checked out, but I don't recall, frankly. I got an email about it. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Thanks. We've gotten them. Okay. You got an email yeah, about where, Scott's where, book? Uh-oh. Okay. About waiting my book. Yeah. That I've had since like January. <laughs> Still haven't read. That was the perfect time to return it. Yeah, right? <laughs> we laugh because because the book drops were open, we were pulling things in and getting them returned. And one day there was an entire set of Valentine's books. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure my kids think the books are theirs already. So it's gonna be a tough, <laughs> tough return. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so I think that was all the reopening plans for our new business. Is that, was there anything else? Um, need to talk about so ne next is update on prospector uh which i've kind of given that it's it's just oh, yeah. on hold until we're open um but but they're ready to go when we're ready to go yeah uh, I'll, I'll add to what kimberly said though um the prospector being a system for um you know uh, allowing us to place holds and, and give holds out to libraries uh, and, and another network of libraries that's all dependent on the courier system. Um, the courier system is uh, maintained by uh, the Colorado Library Consortium. They contract it out, and they're going to start spinning libraries back up, um, sort of on an individual basis. Um, they uh, they they don't have a timeline for that yet. They're going to they're built they're putting together a process for libraries to be able to request reactivating courier delivery um, to their library. Um, but that's that's coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, Prospector obviously depends on that. Library 100th birthday update. Yeah, so I'm gonna take that one. Um, when we met the last time and we had talked about, you know, did the library board want to help with some of the funding for this? Um, you had asked us to kind of come back with a plan for what we thought we would do, um, which we did put together and then of course we didn't meet. Um, and again, things keep changing and sliding a little bit. Um, but I just want to lay out for you kind of what we're thinking at this point. Um, the first thing is we'd like to get, rather than doing a whole new library card for the 100th celebration, we'd like to get stickers that can be put on our already super cool library cards um, that would say 100th birthday. Um, we've designed it, um, we've put out some estimates for it. Um, so that's one thing. We would like to get some kind of staff shirt that can comm commemorate it. Um, and then we had tentatively planned kind of four activities. And originally the plan had been to do them all in June and that's obviously not going to happen. Um, we do still want to recognize on the June 1st date that that is our 100th birthday. Um, we're not entirely sure what that looks like right at the moment. Um, we're thinking we'd like to do some kind of a video um, that might include some of city council comments, um, maybe a little bit of history, that sort of thing. Um, We'll work with the communications department on that. They had originally said they would help write a script, but they've been super busy too, so I don't know where they're at on that. Um, and then we were thinking that it would be nice to maybe do a hundred giveaway, meaning we would give away a hundred things on that week. And we debated around a couple of things and we had an idea today. If you guys have seen our, I brought one with me, our bags. Um, Megan is actually looking at if we can redo these and get a hundred of them. 
with the seal on it, with that 100 seal on it. And that would be something that anybody who came and did curbside delivery until we ran out of them would receive one of those. Um, so that was our thoughts on doing something specifically for the June 1st birthday since it's not something that we're really going to be able to get people in the library and have cake and that sort of thing, which was our original plan. Um, the other three activities um, that we had we had kind of outlined were um, to have the, his the Historical Society do a presentation. Um, the third one that we were talking about is maybe doing some silent movies with the idea that we would see if we could get a live pianist who could play the music along with the movies. And we would sell candies and soda at 1920s prices. And then the big one that we would really like to do is we would like to have a party. We'd like to have an after hours, we're calling it a 1920s themed gala, um, where we would um, have food and activities and um, that sort of thing. It would be after hours. Our thought with that is that we would like to do it as a fundraiser. Um, so we would charge, that would also partly um, keep our numbers from getting too big, and also doing a silent auction with the idea that the fundraising money could go towards repairing and possibly wrapping book drops. So the, those last three really are dependent on when we can actually have people gathering together. So even today, Mark and I were talking about it, that it's very possible that that 1920s party may have to wait all the way until November, December. We just don't know. Um, but we don't want to give up on it yet. But we also don't feel like any of these things can really go virtual. I mean, the idea is we want to get all those people back in and connecting with us. And so going virtual with them doesn't make sense. Um, so we're, we're just kind of, that's still kind of our plan. That's what we want to do. But putting specific dates to any of those is, is just not possible at this point. I think that's a good idea because it could be a welcome back to the library too. Right. And I like all of those ideas actually. Oh, good. Good. So one, one of the questions we would have for you is um, whether you do feel like you would want to provide some funding for this as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much do we have left? Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> we spend? Debbie. <laughs> Do you know, Debbie? I don't even know. Um, I don't know. Let me look through. Let me look through right now. And that if I come up with, because I think a couple months ago I had the amount. But let me check. I'll come. Okay. I'll, I'll interrupt you guys if I have the amount. Okay. Thanks. That's perfect. And we do. Um, we did get some SCFD grant money um, to help with this as well, but that has to go towards more of arts um, related, arts and science. And so that would help with like any kind of live entertainment that we were planning. It would take care of the movies and the licensing and the pianist, that sort of thing. So that does help um, cover some of the costs, which is nice. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll find out if we want to, how much money are we looking for? We would like to get a thousand if that's something that you guys can, can swing. If not, even 500 would be um, helpful. I can't even remember at all what we spent. And, and really, oh, sorry. What, what was that, Mark? Uh, never mind. Okay. I know the one thing that we had agreed to a few months ago was the face painters for the kids stage, um, which I have 
got them on the hook to do that. But again, whether that's even something we can do by the time we get to July mm -hmm. it is a little bit questionable. So um, that mm -hmm. money isn't necessarily technically spent either. So, so I know you guys definitely have a thousand dollars. You have normally yeah. three thousand in your budget, and I don't recall if you have um, spent any of that. I didn't yeah. recall. I didn't recall that we had spent any yet, and I thought we had tentatively committed to spending considerably south of a thousand dollars on the face painters, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think that's it was, definitely yeah. correct. I think it was about 700. Right, that sounds about right. Yeah. So, so you that guys, leaves a couple thousand then probably. The right. only thing I'm remembering from last year is that I think we needed like a set amount to vote on it or was that, I don't know, that um, might be incorrect. Yeah, you do need to um, state like how much you want to put or how much you want to spend on it in your recommendation. Got it. Uh, so what is the date we need? When is the date of the event again or when we need to make uh, money available? Um, it, it just, <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's a hard part because we could say now because we have to go forward with buying stickers and whatever we're going to do for the June 1st. Um, but we can also pull money out of some of the places in the library budget to do that because we are, are looking at pulling money from there as well. And I mean, if that's the case, then we could say we could wait until we got closer to the big party um, and could finalize it at that point. It's, it's kind of a matter of whether you want the money to, to go towards the front end stuff that we know is going to happen or if you want to hold it and see kind of where we're at towards the end of the year. Um, I think all we would be looking for if you want to wait is that we know that there will be some amount so that as we're planning, you know, we're not over planning or under planning. So that's why it would be nice to know sooner rather than later, because as we plan, that's what we'll plan too. Well, it's a hundredth birthday, so a thousand dollars seems <laughs> ten bucks a <laughs> so <it's>, uh, <laughs> I, I think I boosting emotion. morale for the city with the library in any right. way we can now is most important and getting people to the library now. And so I would say, let's do it now. Okay. I agree. Is that a motion? Yes, that's a motion. All right, second. <laughs> Who was the second? I saw a second somewhere. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 I, I guess I have to wave my hand. All right. Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> no? All right. I guess you got $1,000. All right. Thank you so much. We do appreciate that. You want, you want another 1000 while we're at it? No? Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, know there's, you, you never know. As we get closer to the, the gala at the end of the year, we may come begging again. <laughs> yeah, so. My question about the face painters is, do you still need to pay them anything? At this point, no. Okay. Um, I think we just kind of need to see. I haven't been given any direction at this point that we need okay. to cancel our outdoor concerts, so I haven't <laughs> moved forward with anything on that. So. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Is there any any uh? This next item then. Congratulations. Here's thousand dollars. Thank summer, you. Summer reading program. Okay, that's me too. Are you about done <laughs> listening to me? So, um, Sorry, Kimberly. <laughs> that's all right. Part of this is we are very grateful to have Mark, but the fact is we are still transitioning. So um, although summer reading is my baby. So um, we are moving forward with summer reading um, as best we can. Um, we have several plans. First of all, from a registration perspective, we will be sending out an email with a link so that families can register online. Um, that information is going out to all of the Englewood um, families 
uh, later this week because they wrap up school on Friday. So they have, um, who knew I'd become a YouTube star? Um, they have promotional videos from me as well as um, all the information and all of the links. And then we will do a push on um, Monday morning out to everybody that we have emails for from the, the children teen perspective that will also include that registration link. As soon as a family registers, we will email them all of the reading records that they need. So depending on how many kids they have and what ages they are. Um, right now, prize, handing out the prizes is a little bit of a to be determined. We have all of the prizes. Um, we will give out all of the prizes because I don't need 6,000 little things that <laughs> currently are covering the floor of the story time room. Um, it will either be if we have opportunities to let people into the library on a limited basis, if they want to come in, um, we'll work with them to get those prizes. But there is a very real possibility that what we'll do is say, once you have completed the program, um, mm -hmm. email us, we'll give you an option of what book you want, and we'll do kind of a curbside drop of the book and all the prizes. We'll just put bags of prizes together. So we're just kind of waiting to see where that goes and, and how to best um, handle the prizes. So that's a little bit to be determined, but I'm determined those prizes will, will be given out. Um, we're also taking all of our programming virtual for the, the kids, tweens and teens. Um, for the kids, um, I'll start with the Wednesday programs because we have always done performers on Wednesdays and all of the performers that I had booked for this year have agreed to go virtual. Um, and so we will either have live performances from them at one o'clock on Wednesdays or we will have pre-recorded performances that we'll make available on, um, on Wednesdays at one o'clock. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, my staff and I have had already planned programs for those days. And so um, what we're gonna do with those is we will go live on Facebook at one o'clock on Tuesday, one o'clock on Thursday. We'll read a book, we'll demonstrate crafts, we'll talk about kind of some of the other things that we had planned. And then we are gonna give parents an opportunity to um, come and pick up the craft supplies so that they can do those crafts at home. So we're calling it a take and make. Um, obviously, initially, that's going to mean kind of a curbside delivery, and um, Mark does not know this yet, but my plan is to have those calls come through my cell phone so that we can arrange those and not um, mess with the system we've got for regular curbside delivery. I figure that we will get a set of families who will be consistent users of this and will very quickly be able to figure out a system that works for that. Um, for our tweens and our teens, we want to do a little more interactive. So we are actually going to be using Zoom with them. So our tweens, on Thursday afternoons, we will have a Zoom call. Um, we're going to do several different things, including a couple of different science things. Again, there may be things that we tell the families that they can come and pick up the supplies prior to that meeting. Um, teens, because our Monday hangouts have been reasonably well attended, we're gonna keep those and turn them into um, book clubs, writers group, and movie discussions. And then on Tuesday evenings, we'll have more structured programs with them, also through Zoom. Um, we're planning um, trivia nights, online game nights. Um, we have a couple of digital escape rooms that we're planning, um, as well as a couple of craft type things. So with the kids, it's much more of a watch and not interacting with us, but with the tweens and the teens who already know how to use Zoom and how to um, kind of do these interactions, um, we want to do more of the interacting with them. So that's that is the plan. Very good. That sounds great. All right. Lots of, yeah. Um, staff's choice. 
You have heard enough from me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure how this section usually works, um, but I I will say keep an eye out on our um, Facebook page. I just got a um, a, a staff as part of this week as we're figuring out curbside to put together a video uh, to demonstrate to people how curbside service works. Um, they found the di- the inflatable dinosaur costume and decided to <laughs> get real creative. So that 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 came together really nice. That should go up in the next day or two. So keep an eye out for that one. Have I ask something in the staff portion here? I mean, I probably technically missed the new business part because it, oh. my brain isn't functioning very well. But... I, I I choose to hear this question. So okay, thank you. Um, is is the is the library making any plans to uh, to ramp up like grant seeking or anything this year with the with the idea that by this fall when the city is doing its budget writing the they're they're I mean like Colorado as a state is looking at a 3.3 billion dollar drop in revenues and I personally I mean with with Englewood's heavy reliance on sales and use taxes I expect that this fall could be um, you know like it could be trying to make things out of leftovers in the city kitchen. And I wonder, is there a plan to, to step up grant seeking in the meantime? Um, I, I, I can tell you, we will absolutely pursue any opportunity that opens up. There's been, so far, most of what I've seen has been focused, especially new grant opportunities have been focused on areas that are, um, uh, providing essential services. So libraries and other uh, community organizations that are providing uh, access to food, um, things like that. Um, uh, look, real focus on rural libraries. Um, that, uh, and, and so I haven't seen anything come up new yet that seems like something that we would be a strong candidate for, but I'm very much keeping my ear to the ground. And I think that's something that we absolutely have to be considering as we look at the budgetary realities that will, that will come up in the, in the next year um, and possibly farther out than that, depending on what happens with the broader economy. Um, it's not something Christine and I have had a chance to talk about yet, but I think it's certainly something that we will as the budgetary realities going forward. Good. <laughs> Um, yeah. um, and then I just want to give a, a public thank you to all the library staff uh, during this COVID shutdown. Uh, they ramped up and while a lot of people were working from home, they were still reporting to the office, not in full numbers, but um, they were going to the library and deep cleaning. I know there's been posts on Facebook and it's been quite entertaining to see that even our security guard Max was getting into the gig and cleaning with the library staff. So and carpets were cleaned. This library is the cleanest it's ever been um, (laughs) in history. So we look forward to opening the doors and inviting people back in to enjoy it. Hopefully it stays clean for a long time. But, you know, Kimberly and the others, uh, other librarians did an amazing job on the uh, virtual side of offering programs, the story times, the team groups, the meetups, all that to keep people engaged um, in the book clubs and all that. So uh, I just want to thank them for everything they've done uh, and, keep doing that i look forward to opening the doors back up and i know you guys do too but we're getting close hopefully yeah but thank you thanks and, Christine. To, and to follow up, since michelle's not here i'd like to add that um you'll see a lot more from her uh the adult the, the adult programming virtual programming in the coming weeks i know she's uh, working with some of the staff to prepare virtual computer classes as well as virtual adult programs um and so there will be more of that coming in soon that that's taken a lot of work with a lot of the staff to come together and 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 kimberly's kimberly's team has done an amazing job but kimberly in particular you have done an incredible job like my my kids were enjoying the story times during the shutdowns thank you and we're also very happy to have mark on board he's hit the ground running he wasn't even on our payroll yet and he was attending meetings and talking <laughs> reopening plans before he even was a staff member so thanks mark and we look forward to what y'all bring to inglewood and going forward too thank you christina all right great um oh it's only like 45 minutes all right board <laughs> members choice um <laughs> uh I, I've been a bad librarian and haven't read anything in a while, but I do have an uh, excuse this time. Um, here, let me show you. That's my new sign. 
Oh, oh congratulations. <laughs> what a cutie. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh, cool. there he's, look, he's reading already. So he's <laughs> oh, <that's adorable>. <laughs> <laughs> he looks alarmed. <laughs> Engaged. He's very surprised by the whole book thing. <laughs> so, yeah. That um, so that's my big news. That a boy. Um, how are we going to go about, go around this? Uh, I guess Amy? Sure, I don't. Welcome, Lark. Um, glad you're with us, and I'll be excited to come back to the library soon, and I will be utilizing curbside pickup soon. Great. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, Austin. How's everyone doing? Good. <laughs> uh, I have been doing just fine through all of this and really have not had the chance to dive deep into any literature. I've been pretty absorbed on the back end of business operations and whatnot. Um, that's really all that's been going on with me here. I think we're probably in similar boats as far as what our days consist of with technology work and lots of reading and writing of paperwork probably so no surprise there yeah uh marie just hanging on surviving and thriving with uh two <laughs> tiny children and my husband home all the time and uh yeah i've been reading a lot nothing super notable but i've been going through audiobooks really quickly which I think people in general are going through the e-materials more quickly, even if there aren't as many checkouts. Mm -hmm. That's great. Scott. Um, I've been on the other end of the reading spectrum. I've been writing a lot. I've had a, I'm in the middle of a pretty substantial contract to write economic impact reports for the tourism uh, sector mm. in a coastal Oregon County with the COVID-19 shutdown and it is like I, I'm just I'm just like flat on the floor by the time I finish interviewing people for the day they're in terrible shape it's, mm. it's really something to spend whole days talking to people about their businesses collapsing and mm. it's it's been it's been stressful I've got this contract about half wrapped up and I'm really looking forward to putting it behind me it's it's dismal well, so, so you're, you're still getting contracts yourself though in this time yeah it actually amazingly i got a surge of work out of the gate i think a lot of it's because right. of the end of the fiscal year is coming up june 30th and a lot of my clients are you know like spending what they got you know <laughs> not knowing what's coming after that we'll we'll mm -hmm. see yeah it's all very tenuous jen any updates for you or for the school board um, just that we're virtual like everybody else. <laughs> um, you know, we are looking at massive budget problems, you know, just, you know, because most of our funding comes from the state um, or from property taxes and things like that. So school districts in general are going to be hurting a lot. Um, so be kind. <laughs> um, but uh, other than that, you know, learning everything, doing all the online learning and, you know, graduations, um, we are having... Um, for the class of 2020 for both Colorado Finest and Inglewood High School, we're doing um, a parade, a graduation parade where they can be, the graduates can be in their cars so everybody can be appropriately socially distant um, <laughs> so that um, so that there is some sort of celebration for them because the likelihood that they're going to have what you would consider a traditional graduation ceremony, um, it it's just not going to happen. Um, I mean, they're still holding out hope, but the, the likelihood is, is that by the time all these kids are starting to go off to college or trying to start college, we have kids that are going into the military, we have kids that are moving out of state, and so trying to get everybody back together for any sort of graduation ceremony is um, probably not realistic, even if it is like later in the summer, you know, early August or anything like that. So they're doing parades on the 23rd, on May 23rd, so um, I don't, I think EHS is, is route is somewhere along Logan and um, Colorado's finest is down Delaware. So, um, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to do for those kids. But um, other than that, it's just, everybody's learning as fast as they can, all the online stuff, although we're wrapping that up, right? Because Friday's the last day. 
Um, but uh, they, uh, they're returning devices and things like that next week. But so the last day of classes will be Friday. Wow. Anything, uh, Dave? Uh, City Council has gone to Zoom meetings as well, and we've been in that format for uh, probably about six weeks now, maybe eight. I think it was it was actually St. Patrick's Day that we voted that in. Um, so so we've gone to that format. It's been a heavy focus on COVID um, budget. I, I, it sounds like the same discussion everybody's having here, uh, just trying to keep everything afloat trying to look down the road as much as you can, but it's pretty uncertain what's around the corner. We did get more positive than expected uh, revenue news for March, April, and, and they're feeling um, slightly sunny about May. So, so we'll see what happens. But uh, again, the, the future is muddy right now. Um, I, I, I would say, you know, I'm happy that there are these little bright spots of humanity, kids graduating, a uh, baby born, congratulation guy, we're taking on new staff, new roles. Um, so I'm happy when these things come along and, and I know everybody's tired of dwelling on, you know, all, all the misfortune that has come out of this. So I feel like we're slowly, cautiously, kind of step by step moving back to uh, prior lives, but I know that there's still a ways to go too. So uh day by day which i know everybody is doing here great is that and is englewood um mostly dependent on sales tax or the property tax you know, it, it turns out uh it was pointed out to us by our cfo not as much as many other cities uh we don't have right. a major retail hub uh which is kind of what saved us uh, we don't have a huge mall um, but we, we don't have things of that nature. So we've worked out, we've got a lot of industrial too that, that's really helping out and, and we've got a fair amount of online sales too that have, that have really made up some of the difference. So it's not our greatest month. We didn't set records, but uh, we didn't take nearly the hit that some of the surrounding cities have. Um, so uh, again, we'll count our blessings and, and that's what we're doing at this point. But uh, again, we, we'll see what the coming months hold, but so far it, it hasn't been devastating. Okay. And again, congratulations, Guy. I'm very happy for you. That's great. <laughs> Children Thank are you. wonderful. You bet. Uh, anyone else? Christina or anybody? No? All right. I guess we can uh, move to adjourn. Or adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Thank right. you, guys. Our first Thank you. Meeting. See you next <laughs> month. <laughs> nice meeting you all. All right. Take Bye. care. Good to see you. All right. Everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.